This Saturday in boxing, history was made once again. At the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Bernard Hopkins, 48 years old. 48 years old. And he's still doing it. Uh, he has many doubters. Uh, I guess you could put me in that as well. Every time you think he's down, he literally just comes back and shuts you up. Unfortunately, we have a show to do, so I need to talk. Uh, he defeated Tavares Cloud to win the IBF Light Heavyweight Championship belt. An absolutely masterful display against a younger guy, 17 years to be exact. He's 31 years old, and well, it was Tremendous. You don't really go to a Bernard Hopkins fight and watch it on HBO Boxing After Dark just to, or maybe it was World Championship Boxing, uh, just to, you know, look for the knockout punch because it ain't going to come. You go to watch the sweet science. And that is what he put on with Tavares Cloud, playing the angles, uh, throwing in hooks. The work he did off the ropes, Robert, was tremendous. Uh, does he just continue to impress you without even trying? Absolutely. It was, as you put it, a masterful performance. It was the sweet science in action. One watched that fight, I watched that fight, and I think everybody else who watched that fight sort of dumbfounded, savoring his delectable boxing skills. Just extraordinary. Up against a younger man, the underdog as usual, and of course 48 years old, and he fought brilliantly. He not only outfought Cloud, which might not have been a big struggle, but he also outfought Cloud. He basically brought the fight to Tavoris Cloud, and Cloud had no answer whatsoever. It was a remarkable performance. And you know what? He didn't run away from Cloud. He outboxed him. His ring generalship was awesome, and it was. Because, you know, when you look at some of these fights, when you're being chased through every which direction in the ring, you can get tired. For some reason, Bernard Hopkins did not get tired. And he outboxed Tavares Cloud. At times, he beat Tavares Cloud to the punch. And, you know, maybe it was the strategy of Tavares Cloud and his corner, Abel Sanchez. Because Jim Lampley brought up something that made total sense to me. Stop going for his head. Work the body for six or seven rounds. So what exactly was Tavares Cloud's strategy, Robert? It remains to be seen what his strategy was. Uh, he seemed to be in awe of Hopkins. He seemed, it almost seemed as if he was a sparring partner, um, acting as though he was a sparring partner in deference to the superior fighter. Uh, I don't know what their game plan was. I mean, clearly, the only game plan that could have, would have been possible would have been for them to crowd Hopkins, yeah. to push Hopkins, to, to fire punches at Hopkins, not only at his head, but at his body, actually at any part of Hopkins. But Hopkins basically took the action away from Cloud in the beginning of the fight, and Cloud was never able to retrieve it. And that's sort of all she wrote. Yeah. You know, Robert, Andre Ward brought up something very good as well. The broadcast was great. Uh, that, you know, in the middle rounds, when Cloud would land a few punches, he would stop and he would rest. And when he would rest, you would give a guy who's 17 years older than you time to rest. So, I, I mean, again, it just goes into the strategy of, uh, you could coin it, what the fuck were they doing? Because uh, it was dumbfounding to watch. What else could be next for Bernard? I mean, what else? He has nothing more to prove. That's so obvious. But is he going to continue to fight? Should he continue to fight? He might as well continue to fight. <laughs> I mean, it's what he does best. Um, he is clearly established himself as an all-time great with his performance. I don't think anybody disputes that at this point. Um, I think, he, I think he should look down. I think he should take a look at Frotch. I think he should take a look at Kessler. He should take a look at some of these other, you know, these are younger men, um, talented men, um, and men that I believe that Hopkins can beat. Um, you, think he can beat you think he could beat uh, Carl Frotch, really? I would put nothing by Hopkins. When we spoke last week and we talked about uh, him fighting Cloud, we know <laughs> which side of the fence we both were. Yeah. Um, I think you can't put anything by Hopkins. I mean, he is a remarkable talent. And um, 
I, be, I, I believe that he has a chance against Frotch. I think it would be a fabulous fight. He's certainly not going to like. He's, he's not. He's not going to take a step back. Sure. That's for sure. He'll continue to fight, and he'll continue to fight the best there is. And um, and I look forward to it. I mean, what a scintillating performance! Just amazing. It was a great performance. We saw how poor of a boxer he is technically, and how he just has a lot of power, and yet. It seemed like he didn't even use it that much. With Carl Froch, he's a lot more technical than Tavares Cloud. That would be a big step up for Bernard Hopkins. Sure, he can take his time. He joked about how he wants to stay around for another five years when Max Kellerman was in the ring with him. However, if he were to face Froch, on the surface, I would take Froch. Just because when you look at a very technical fighter in Lushan Butte, who, you know, when you, when you do the whole contender-pretender, he was probably a pretender. We'll see how he does against John Pascal. But Froch hits harder. He won, I mean, like, not a ton, but he competed with Andre Ward in the Super 6. That would be a tough fight for Bernard Hopkins. I think he would definitely beat Kessler, but Froch, I mean, that, on the surface, that's a tough fight for him, Robert. It is a tough fight, and I think Hopkins wants tough fights. I mean, Hopkins Hopkins is basically uh, constructing his legacy, and he wants tough fights. He doesn't want any easy fights. He doesn't want any easy paydays. He has proved his point, and he's going to continue to prove his point until everybody understands that there is only one Bernard Hopkins. And again, 48 years old, um, and he's not he's not a, he's not Jack Nicklaus. He's not a 48 year old golfer. He's a 48 year old who is fighting, who's getting yeah. hit in the face. Most extraordinary. One of the best American stories in sports that not many people even know all that well. Robert, thank you so much for the time, and we will talk to you again soon. Great, Rick. Talk to you.